Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again. My name is Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a day we've never seen before and a day we'll never see again. And as always, we believe that it is a day to praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to his name. And we welcome you to this night to another edition of the New Harvest E-Church. We're going to be talking about a word tonight from John chapter 10. John chapter 10 starting at verse 1 all the way down to 15. So I'll begin reading the lesson, um, John chapter 1, starting at verse 10. And it says, and it says, and this is from a new uh, new international version, Verily, very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen uh, by the gate, but climbs in by another way, some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But 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 they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what, what he was telling them. There, therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. And I, all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will uh, be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the fullest or more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, the hired hand. He is not the shepherd, and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolves coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolves attacks the flock and scatters it. The man ran away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, he says in verse 14. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me. I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Amen. The tag I want to place on this text tonight is endless love, endless love. I'm preparing to, 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 to go uh, and perform a marriage ceremony in Baton Rouge this coming weekend, and I'm excited about it. And I, I started looking at a couple of songs, and Endless Love came up. And, and I thought about Endless Love because this, this passage of Scripture, this passage of Scripture talks about an intimate relationship with Jesus who is represented in this text as the shepherd. He, he, he wants his sheep, that, that is, us who believe in Christ, to have an intimate relationship with him. The word intimate, it, 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 it speaks of a close association or a special familiarity. It also signifies a trusted confidant a best friend to whom you can communicate detailed secrets. 
The, the only way for us to develop an intimate relationship with one another is to spend uninterrupted private time with them. This, this, this helps us uh, get to know the person likes and dislikes. What is acceptable and unacceptable in the relationship. You, you, you also does develop a sensitivity to hear that person's voice when they speak. In the same manner, Jesus deserves this kind of intimacy with all who call him Lord. He longs, hallelujah, to spend time with us and shower his love on us. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for us. And because he has done that on our behalf, shouldn't we intentionally try to develop that type of intimate relationship with him so we can truly comprehend the one who has came to give us abundant life. Let's talk about this intimacy for a minute and, 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 and that, that Jesus desires of us in this lesson called Endless Love. Our first point in this lesson comes from the first verse. Listen, listen to the first verse and then I'm gonna tell you the point. The first verse says, he says, he says, verily I tell you the truth, Pharisees, Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. A thief and a robber. Uh, can you say with me, stranger danger? Stranger danger. That's, 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 it, it, it goes on to talk about there are some strangers to the sheep and, and they are dangerous. And he's talking to the Pharisees. He says, I'm, I, 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 those that don't enter the sheep pen, they don't come into the sheepfold by the door, but climb up some other way. These are thieves and robbers. But he goes on and he says, and he says, well, now look at this. Y'all y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. So, so let me, let me go a little deeper with you because I'm trying to explain to you in the most simplest form that I possibly can. He calls his sheep. He said, the gate open, the gate keeper opens the gate for him and the sheep listen to them. It's, it's saying that, that, that the sheep and the shepherd have a relationship and the one who keeps the gate knows uh, that they got a relationship. Oh, I'm trying to talk to somebody right now because your relationship with Jesus has to be based on uh, your relationship with God too. And, and God is the one that's the gatekeeper and Jesus is the shepherd. Oh, hallelujah. But well, we talking about stranger danger here. And he goes on, he says, and, and when he has brought all of his sheep out and led them out, and, and he says, okay, he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Oh, but they will not follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Everybody holler, stranger, danger. Oh, I, I know my, my wife's voice. I, I've been with her for over 35 years now. I, I know her voice and how it whispers in my ear. I know her voice when, when she speaks to me in intimate terms, but I also know her voice when she speaks to me and she's upset. I know her voice, but 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 more importantly than I know my wife's voice, I know my Savior's voice. And him times when he speaks to me, my good shepherd speaks to me softly. Hey, Mark, Mark, do this, Mark, do that. Mark, come here, Mark, go that. I understand his voice even when he has to discipline me or put a roadblock in front of me to stop me from falling off the edge. 
we ought to know the shepherd's voice. But when it comes to stranger danger, we need to stay away because the stranger that's causing the danger are thieves and robbers. People who, who, who show up in the, in the church, in the body of believers, manipulating themselves into positions that they can still kill and destroy. They, they're strangers because they don't know the shepherd and the shepherd sure don't know them. Oh, hallelujah. So he says in verse seven, therefore, Jesus says, verily I tell you the truth, I am the gatekeeper uh, and the sheep of the sheep for the sheep and all who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever's entered through me will be saved. Oh, hallelujah. Everybody trying to find a way to get in. Some want to come over the wall. Some want to go underground, digging tunnel. You can't get to Jesus like that. You got to go straight through him through faith, believing in his death, burial, and resurrection. Because those thieves, they come only to steal, kill, and destroy. What voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the commercialization of, of, of America? Are you listening to what how they make America out of a, a what they call that a reality show? What what voices are you listening to? How is it that we can live in a country that have now taken lies and made them the truth? Stranger danger. Thieves come only to kill, to steal, and destroy. But Jesus says, I, I come, I come, I come. I, that, that's what the good shepherd does. I come that you might have life and that you might have life more abundantly. Yes, the Jesus knows the thieves and the robbers, that stranger danger, and we should know too. But you also need to understand that Jesus came to give us abundance. More than enough, overflowing. The main difference between Jesus and the thieves is, is that, it, that the latter destroys life while Jesus infuses newness of life in whomever he touches. It is important to remember there's a big distinction between religion and a relationship with Jesus. Religion piles on rules and regulations that are, are, are difficult to hold on. Many people sit in church feeling guilty and powerless and frustrated because they've heard so much religion and commanded to share and to adhere to these rules that sometimes it is impossible for them to even have a clue of how to keep any of those rules. But Jesus never intended us to be solely religious. In fact, he affirms this point when he declares he has come to give the sheep abundant life. Abundant life comes with a covenant relationship with Jesus and, a, and, and consists of a high quality of living on earth and culminates with eternal life and a place in heaven. When Jesus uses that phrase in verse 10, my, uh, uh, I, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come that you might have life and, and have it more abundantly. He's referring to God's covenant with us. This is a covenant of super abundance, overflowing, more than enough, more than sufficient. Jesus makes it possible for us to excel in supernatural and super abundant ways in every aspect of our lives. In short, 
knowing and, and, and obeying Jesus can result in abundant life, even for the most ordinary Christian. Jesus came to give us abundant life. My last point is Jesus, the good shepherd, who has an endless love for you. Jesus identified himself three times as the good shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd in verse 11. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. And he goes on and he says, later on in verse 1, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my, my sheep know me. He just talking about, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd. But he contrasts the good shepherd here again with those hirelings. These are folks who, who are just in place because it's a job. And they, they don't care about the sheep. They just care about the money that they have received or can receive, what they can fleece the flock with. And he says to them, soon as the wolves come, and attacks the flock, these hirelings will scatter. Oh, you got to hear me. In the body of believers, in the local body especially, you have sh uh, wolves in sheep clothing. And if you got a hireling as your pastor, every time they attack, he going to duck and dodge and run. You've been trying to figure out why so much chaos in your church. It's because you have a hireling as the shepherd and you got wolves in the midst of the sheep and, and the wolves are tearing at the sheep. Mercy, God. Mm -mm -mm. And the shepherd, the one, that hireling, he's gone AWOL. You can't find him, leaving the sheep defenseless, vulnerable, and open to attack. But I'm Jesus, he says, I'm the good shepherd. I'm committed to them. I'll lay down my life for them. I, I, I love them with, with an everlasting love, an endless love, an intimacy that will that never go away. I love them. I, 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 oh, you got to hear me now. I can hear this song. I can hear this song. My love. Jesus saying this to me. My love. There's only you in my life. You, you're the only thing that's right. My, my first love. Yeah, you, you, you're every breath I take. You, every step I make. And, and I want to share all of my love with you and no one else. Yes. Jesus looks at us and he sees his endless love. He says in that song, in your eyes, your eyes, your eyes, tell me how much you care. Oh, yes, you always be my endless love. Church, you got to hear me. We are the bride of Jesus Christ, and we are his endless love because he laid down his life for us when he died on Calvary's hill. He shed his blood when they pierced him in the side and blood and water came running down. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon his shoulder. He is worthy to be called the lamb that was slain, our good shepherd. And I can hear my boy, King David, picking it up because not only does Jesus love us, but we must love him. And David said, God, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul for his name's sake. Yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anointed my head with all and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
That's an endless love. You got to love Jesus like Jesus loved you. Oh, hallelujah. I hope this word tonight talking about the stranger danger, talking about Jesus being the 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 one who gives us abundant life and, and Jesus being the one that will love us endlessly. I hope this message touched somebody. Do you hear his voice? He's calling right now. And he said in this text, my sheep hear my voice and no other will they follow. They won't follow the stranger no more. So what we need to do is just lift up the name of Jesus in prayer. Pray the prayer of salvation and you will be part of his endless love. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sin. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. Thank you, God, for loving me. Thank you for your endless love. Thank you for your abundant life. Thank you. Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Be blessed, Facebook. This is Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest Sea Church. We'll see you next time. I look forward for you to jump on online with us on Friday. Um, I may be able to share it on my page, but if I can't, why don't you join us on God in the Midst Get Them Radio? If you join us on God in the Midst, get them radio, you will be able to hear a message this weekend dealing with the, I mean, this Friday dealing with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I am just so excited about this word coming on Friday from Pastor Helen Price. Oh, hallelujah. So in order to call us and to, to, to find us on on uh, Facebook or find us on uh, Blog Talk. You can call on Friday. The number is, I'll tell you in a minute, I'm having a hard time. The number is, where my studio at? There you go. The number is 619-639-4733. Again, 619-639-4733. And uh, we might also be live on Facebook. But definitely on Sunday, for Sunday school, we'll be back live. Be blessed, everyone. May God bless you and may God keep you. And always remember, be blessed and always be a blessing.